Hi folks, and welcome back to another Philosophy Club. Okay, so this week's question is, can computers think? This week also marks the return of every philosopher's favourite tool, the thought experiment. So, hey, it's back. But first, a quick note. Um, so this thought experiment is called the Chinese Room. If you speak Chinese, this experiment will ask you to imagine that you don't. Or alternatively, any time I say the word Chinese, you can swap it out for a language that you don't speak. Okay, so let's go. So, I want you to imagine that you're in a room, and there's a letterbox on either side of the room. People can insert questions in the form of Chinese symbols into one letterbox and get answers to those questions in Chinese from the other letterbox. And look, you're in the room too, and inside the room in front of you there's a manual, and the manual is written in English, and it has a rule for every possible question symbol that you could get and tells you every possible correct answer symbol to send out the answer box. So say for example someone puts in a Chinese question, so you see the symbols in the question, you look up the symbols in the manual, and the manual tells you in English which answer to put out the answer box, but the answer goes out in Chinese. And so you send the correct answer at the answer box every time, and the people who ask the question think that the room understands them. So the first question that we should ask is which part of the room understands Chinese? Is it you? Is it the manual? Or is it the entire room? Is it both? Or neither? John Searle, the philosopher who devised this thought experiment, argued that the people outside the room submitting the questions and getting answers, to them it looks like the room understands Chinese. But Searle also argues that although it appears that to the outside world that the room understands Chinese, he argues that you inside the room do not. Why? Well, assuming again you don't actually speak Chinese, you don't understand the symbols you're processing, or the answers you're sending out. You understand the rules of how to manipulate the symbols, but you don't know what they mean. To understand Chinese, you need to understand the meaning of the words that you're using, and not just how to use them to convince others. And to manipulate symbols is not really the same as being able to understand or know Chinese, is it? So it's for this reason that Searle thinks that computers can never think like a human because he thinks that computers at a basic level work the same way the Chinese room thought experiment does. There are inputs, programs or processes, and outputs in computers the same way there are questions, manuals, and answers in our room experiment. If a computer cannot really understand the symbols that it uses to speak Chinese, then Searle argues it cannot have true artificial intelligence. And what he means here by true artificial intelligence is something along the lines of, say, a mind or a consciousness the way we think humans have minds or consciousnesses. So what do you think of his Chinese room argument or thought experiment? Do you think computers could be able to think the way humans do? What do you think a mind or a consciousness is exactly? And what might the differences and similarities be between a brain and a computer? The questions the Chinese room poses will continue to be debated in the coming years, as things like machine learning and big data improve and become more complex and more prevalent in our lives, questions around artificial intelligence will continue to flourish for philosophers, computer scientists and cognitive scientists, and also science fiction writers. Okay, so that's it for this week, um, let me know what you think in the comments and we'll be back to you again next week. Okay.